in this video we're going to talk about how to learn how to code through Coursera. So if you're just starting to code and you have zero prior experience, I recommend that before you sign up for like a super extensive course, why don't you just take a short course and just use that to figure out if in general you like coding or not. So the first course would be Introduction to Python by the Coursera Project Network. The actual course content is only about an hour and you will be learning the very basics of programming. With Python, which is one of the essential languages that you will learn more about in future courses, I think that with this course you can accomplish two things. Number one, you can see whether computer science is for you or not. And the other thing that you're going to get out of this course, it says it's going to teach you a little bit how to start thinking like a programmer so that when you go into your next coding course, it's not going to catch you by surprise. You're already going to have that mentality and you are going to be less afraid and more capable to get through the material. So once you complete this course, if you decide that you want to continue learning, I recommend that you take a full on Python course. Just continue learning what you already started. The course I recommend is Crash Course on Python by Google. The cool thing about this course is that it's beginner friendly, so it doesn't require any experience, which means that you're already going to go into this course knowing a little bit and you're going to feel more confident at the beginning of the course and it's going to help you increase your chances that you're going to actually make it through the entire course. And the cool thing about this course is that it has a final project. So you're not just learning how to solve random functions and random coding problems, but you're actually going to be able to take all the knowledge that you gained and apply it into a project. Keep in mind that coding is not necessarily about remembering everything and how to implement the code, how to write functions, how to write the code. That's not what it's about. What it's about, it's the overall picture. And that's what working on a project of your own is going to force you to learn and it's going to help you understand better how all the different pieces that you code fit together into one solution. Let's say that now you finish your first solid Python course and you want to continue learning, but you don't necessarily know where you want to specialize eventually. The next course is Computer Science Programming with a Purpose by Princeton University. You should be able to get through this course if you finish the previous Python course. In this course, you will be learning about more complicated data structures. You will be learning about recursion and how to optimize the performance of your code, which in Python, you don't necessarily need to optimize the code to run, but there are other languages where this is essential and it is an essential skill to have as a computer scientist. Once you finish this course, I think you're ready to start specializing you have basically two options. Do you want to continue and pursue a professional certificate or do you want to continue and pursue a bachelor's degree? Through Coursera, you could do either. So if you wanted to pursue a bachelor's degree, the University of London offers an introduction to computer science and programming specialization. You will be able to use your grade from these courses in order to apply for their bachelor's degree program. The University of London is not the only institution that offers degrees through Coursera. Here's an example of a different degree in cybersecurity. So go ahead and browse through the site and see if this is something which would interest you. Now with the degree programs out of the way, if what you wanna do is pursue a professional certificate, in that case, I recommend you take one more course before you start applying for jobs or more importantly, applying for your first initial internship to gain the necessary experience in order to be able to apply for a paid position. So if what you wanna do is code applications for Android, then Meta has their own professional certificate here. You're gonna learn not just how to code, but again, you're also gonna be learning about applying the big picture and completing your own coding projects, which is something that you could put on your portfolio and use that to apply for jobs in the field. 
you're also going to be learning about user experience and, and user interface design how to work with data as well and databases javascript and react and react native uh, a project capstone towards the end and they're even teaching you how to prepare for your coding interviews so you might be able to have enough background after finishing this course to right away apply for either a paid internship or your first junior position. If what you want to do is focus on web applications, then IBM offers their full stack software developer professional certificate. The cool thing about this is that they are going to teach you not just the front end of web development, so HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but you will also learn React and Node.js, which are basically industry standards now. You're also gonna develop an application using Flask, which you already know Python. And they also teach you how to deploy the application, which to me was one of the harder things about learning to code. How do the, once you have that application, it only lives on my computer. How do I actually publish that on the web? And all of this learning obviously culminates with a solid project that you can put on your portfolio. Let's say that you took the beginning part of, the, of this video seriously and you uh, finished your Python course. And after that, afterwards you did the Princeton course. And after that, you took one of the professional certificates here. I wanna add three more courses to this list, which I think you can take at any point during your learning. It's three courses, which I also took while I was learning CS50 and they really helped me complement the technical side of the learning. So the first course is only an hour and a half. It's get started with Figma. Figma is a great tool that I use every day to manipulate my images to be able to put them into my web applications. It's a great tool where I also am able to plan out the flow of the app and to plan out the user interface and the user experience before I get into coding. It's an essential skill to have to be able to use Figma. Another course that I recommend you should also take is the introduction to GitHub and Visual Studio Code. It's just going to make you a little bit more proficient using version control with GitHub on the terminal while you're coding so that you can keep track of the changes that you make to your code so that you can learn how to collaborate with other coders with your code and it's an essential skill to have as a programmer and it can only help you to get more proficient with such an important technology as github another course which i think you should take and i ended up taking a similar course while i was learning how to code is the network basics on microsoft windows now this course here obviously it's taught on windows you could probably find a separate course which is perhaps more mainstream more having to do with data networks such as david bombell's course his course is very long so here i'm bringing this one it's only two hours long i recommend you take it so you have at least some concept in your head of how networks work. It's a totally different discipline. It falls within the IT industry. And it's not something that in general, the main coding computer science courses teach. CS50 taught me about networking and they only had about a 15 minute video on the topic. So I recommend you take this course. And again, you could take it at any point during your learning. I recommend you also take Docker. So it's a way to containerize your applications and be able to deploy them onto the web. It's a skill that you will need eventually, especially if you want to go into the full stack web development. And again, it's one of those skills that a lot of the main courses skip. And now this last course that you could also take, it's, I would say it's an optional one. If you really want to add some extra polish to your database skills, it won't hurt you to just take a general database and SQL course and if you really want to get into databases, there are more advanced courses on this topic. But in general, if you just want to add that as an additional skill to your tool bag, I think that will be, just be a great idea to spend one more hour on your learning and have a better grasp on databases.